folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to talk about euthanasia and knee crop season. It's something that we unfortunately have to do on our farm and ranch to relieve pain and suffering to animals and to get a proper diagnosis. Stay tuned and more after these messages. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to talk about humane euthanasia and necropsy. And specifically, you know, when we talk about humane euthanasia, that's a Latin term meaning good death. And I want to start out by talking about animals at the end of, of their life or, or the relief of suffering, which is something that as caregivers to animals that we don't want to have to do, but it's our responsibility that when those animals are not going to recover, that we relieve their pain and suffering through humane euthanasia. I heard Jan Shearer at a meeting say, when it comes to euthanasia, it's better to be a week early than to be a day late. And so the first thing that you have to consider on humane euthanasia is what type of technique you're going to use. And, and specifically, whether we're going to use a gunshot or captive bolt are our two main methods of euthanasia. Regardless of which technique you use, the location in which you will provide the the gunshot or the penetrative captive bolt there's two ways to look at this and and one of them is to look at making the x between the the medial canthus of the eye and the pole medial canthus of the eye and the pole and where that x uh, crosses is where the brain's located one of the more common mistakes is that people apply the gunshot between the eyes that'll be too low if if we're going to make that x you'll see here in this this uh, graph that that going between the eye to the pole between the eye and the pole will give you the X that'll show you where the brain is otherwise in a paper that has been recently published from Iowa State University you'll be able to see that instead of making the X if you simply shoot them between the ears or apply the captive bolt between the ears is the same location something that I had not seen but but something that that was observed by scientists at, at Iowa State. This is a cross section of a brain or a head showing where the steel goes through if you shoot too low or shoot between the eyes that you will be missing the brain. The brain is located up here uh, dorsally to where this, this steel is located and you can see that where it's, where it's located when you shoot between the eyes or apply the captive bolt between the eyes um, that you'll, you'll hit sinus area and it will not uh, render a kill shot. Uh, when some of the things that we've learned through the years on euthanasia studies that if we can use a 22 rifle but you want to use solid points you can utilize a a high powered rifle but understand that you will have through and through shots and there might be some danger with with nine millimeter or high powered rifles of of bullets entering the front and exiting the back of the head and so you need to be very very careful understanding that that could happen the use of a shotgun can be effective if you want to use slugs those are quite effective if you want to use a uh, bird shot use four shot high brass and you need to be close but when it comes to euthanasia those are, are some of the things the one thing about euthanasia that I want to make sure you don't use is you don't use blunt force trauma no no sledgehammers or anything to that nature to euthanize a calf we do not inject any substance into the vein including air and the last one is we do not use electrocution. Those are things you want to make sure you do not use on your farm. Uh, it's not ethical and it will result in animal cruelty charges. When we come back, we're going to talk about doing necropsies and getting a diagnosis. You're watching Doc Talk. More after these messages. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. 
It's time, the Great Bend Farm and Ranch Expo, April 5th, 6th, and 7th in Great Bend, Kansas. 700 booths filled over 80 acres of exhibits. Dale Brisby, the 6th and 7th at 1 o'clock, sponsored by American State Bank. Find all your livestock equipment needs, precision tillage equipment, at the Great Bend Farm and Ranch Expo. Free admission, free parking. Corporate sponsors, American Hat Company, Great Bend Co-op. Go to StarExpos.net. That's April 5, 6, 7. You don't want to miss it. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. This is segment is brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan here. I said we're going to jump into necropsies. I lied. We're going to finish up on euthanasia and the big thing is is confirming death because you want to make sure that you confirm death uh, prior to doing a necropsy. When we use captive bolt and, and uh, gunshot, we want to the first thing you can do to test for death, as shown in this picture, is to look for a corneal reflex. So you'll just touch the, the outer surface of the eyeball. There should be no blinking or, or response there. And then lastly, you can confirm death by, by using a stethoscope and listening for heartbeat. And so those are things that we, or the absence of a, of a heartbeat with, with these. If you do use captive bolt rather than a gunshot, the one thing I always recommend is, is restrain the animal. I see people, I've seen two catastrophic injuries of people using captive bolts and pins where the animal was down, they thought the animal couldn't move, they uh, went to apply the captive bolt, the calf slung its head, which is quite heavy, and, and one of our, our cowboys got a, a compound fracture standing in the pen of the calf slinging its head when he tried to do a captive bolt. So make sure you put a, a rope on the head or a halter on the head and, and restrain that animal so that for human safety because you have to get quite close when it comes to, to captive bolt. Moving on to necropsies and, and you know the necropsy is really kind of like the CSI or, or the coroner where we're trying to get a diagnosis of why that animal was sick or why that animal was injured or or why that animal died. Uh, and, and my dad, when he was in practice, said it was easier for him to sell uh, a vaccine for a few thousand dollars than it was to sell a diagnosis for a few dollars. And I think that what, what we have done and, and not looked at is when we have an abnormal death or when we have a death on, on our premise that could be the start of an epidemic, is getting the veterinarian out on the farm to do a proper necropsy or doing a proper necropsy ourselves, which I've trained many, many producers uh, throughout the years on large farm operations to do their own necropsies. And, and I think that necropsies give us an understanding of the gross pathology, which then we can take the samples, send them into the diagnostic laboratory and get back whether it's a virology report a bacteriology report or some other type of ology report that will tell us or give us the understanding of why the animals died. So we're going to kind of go stepwise through a necropsy, what I'm looking for uh, specifically on a bovine a feedlot calf and, and explain that. When we do the necropsy, the first thing we'll do is we'll lay the animal with its left side down. And there's two reasons for that. The first one is it puts the rumen on the downside and gets that out of our way. And the other one is, and when we're talking about uh, bovine respiratory disease, uh, when, when we have uh, a lesion, it's going to show up on the right side because on the right side of the carcass, or the right side of the animal, we have two bronchus to go into the lungs, the right cranial bronchus and the right caudal bronchus. And the first lobe of the lung, because of gravity that will show bovine respiratory disease, will be that right cranial lung lobe. So we want the right cranial lung lobe up and we want the the rumen down. So we're going to start out, we got the animal laid out, so if you have a veterinarian come out you can be one step ahead of them, have the animal with the left side down. When we come back from the messages we're going to get, we're going to go ahead and get started uh, opening up this carcass, 
We'll walk stepwise through some of the different systems and some of the things we look for. You're watching Doc Talk. More after these messages. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego is driven by the spirit of American ingenuity. Come in for a new Chevrolet car, truck, or SUV. If we don't have exactly what you want, we'll find it for you. And we also have a great selection of used cars. We make sure you have an easy, fun, and transparent sales experience that saves you time and money. But if you want high-pressure salesmen an hour spent in the finance office, you'll just have to go elsewhere. Brown, Chevrolet, Buick, and Wamigo. We're making car buying great again. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? I'm Rex Ann Strew, veterinarian in Western Iowa. I have a veterinary clinic and uh, started doing stem cell therapy on dogs in August of 2014. And after the first two dogs, after three weeks, I saw such dramatic results. I said, hey, I have arthritis. I have joints, really need this help. Where can I go to get this done? I had stem cell therapy done in November of 2014 on my finger joints, my hip, and the ball of my left foot, uh, all of which I'd had real severe problems with, saw a pretty dramatic uh, improvement in a short amount of time. I would certainly recommend that somebody don't wait until I'm in the position that I was in with the d damage already done to my joints. I encourage veterinarians to use it for their animals, and I encourage anybody who sees this video, if you have need, get in contact with these people because this is a phenomenal place to have this done. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Howdy, I'm Kurt Pate with the Tip of the Day. We deal with a lot of bulls around this place, and uh, we get along with them pretty good because we work them a lot. And if you work them properly and move them quite a bit, you'll, you'll, the, the fighting will reduce, and every time you move them, they learn to take pressure, and then when you start to work with them, they don't start fighting each other. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. This Medford, New Jersey school bus runs on biodiesel, and so do these. In fact, all of these buses run on clean-burning biodiesel, which is great because the more we use biodiesel in our heavy-duty vehicles, the less carbon pollution in our air. Think how great it would be if more of our school buses ran on biodiesel. More biodiesel, less carbon pollution. More is less. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan here, and we're talking about necropsies. And, and as I said, we need to put the animal on the left side. I need to back up one step. We need to have a good clinical history ready for the veterinarian. So why did the animal, what was the clinical signs the animal was exhibiting, and how was the animal treated? That's very, very important, whether it's a, a, an animal case that's live or whether it's an animal case for necropsy. The other thing is we need to make sure that we have an animal that is that is of adequate quality, meaning not autolyzed, especially in the summer. We can't have a rotten carcass. We'll, we'll yield no results from doing the necropsy. So we have the animal there. We have a clinical uh, case diagnosis or definition of what we've done, the history. 
we have an animal that is proper for doing the necropsy and we have it left side down. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the pluck, which is the tongue, esophagus, trachea, heart, and lungs. And I will first start out by looking for BVD, persistently infected mucosal disease, which shows up on the tongue, in the esophagus, anywhere from the, the lips to the anus is where we'll see these ulcers if we have a BVD PI that has suffered from mucosal disease. And, and these erosions will be on the tongue, in the esophagus, in the abomasum, small intestine. So it's the first thing that I'll look for, and you can see from these pictures uh, what, these, these, what a normal, nice, white, shiny esophagus looks like versus one that, that has uh, erosions from BVD. The next thing I'll do is I will look at the pharynx. So pharynx is where we have both the digestive and, and the uh, uh, respiratory tract meet at the back of the throat. Here we can have balling gun uh, issues. If someone is overzealous with applying the balling gun or a speculum, we can actually have that protrude out the side of the mucosal surface of the pharynx. Uh, be very, very careful when placing these balling guns. The next one is I will open up the larynx, which is the voice box or the mower of the cow. It should be white and shiny and, and not have any erosions. If we have calf diphtheria, which can be caused by Fusobacterium necrophorum, which also causes foot rot and liver abscesses, I might see some sort of lesions. This is usually in, in lighter weight calves. But the real thing that I'm looking for at this point in time, as I open up the trachea, is looking for infectious bovine rhinotracheitis, which is the pathognomonic, which is otherwise known as IBR. IBR, we don't see it very often. The vaccines that we have are quite effective. But when we do see it, it is a pathognomonic lesion of this white fibrinonecrotic exudate or cheesy substance on the inside of this trachea that isn't scraped off easily by my, by my knife. You can see that that is, if you see those lesions in that trachea, you can bet your bottom dollar that you have IBR on your farm. The next thing I'm going to do is examine the lungs. And the lungs have a lot of pathology. And so I'm not going to go through all of them. But the, the first one is going to be bronchopneumonia, OK, or BRD. And, and this will be shown in the week is, is, is a cranial ventral uh, presentation, meaning towards the front of the lungs and to the bottom of the lungs because of gravity, OK? So the bottom of the lungs and the front is where we'll see the dark red areas of consolidation. And these are heavy. These are thick. These are not squishy. They're hard areas of the lung. Normal lung would be pink. It will be, um, be like grabbing a, a bag full of marshmallows type of, of feeling and, and spongy. So you can see the difference right away here in this picture is the dark area is what bronchopneumonia looks like and the top area is normal lung. So when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about necropsies. Uh, we'll examine more of the lung and we'll talk about some of the other body systems. It's time, the Great Bend Farm and Ranch Expo, April 5th through the 7th in Great Bend, Kansas. This is your regional expo held in the heart of Kansas. J.D. Wing Horse Clinician, all three days, sponsored by T-Cross Ranch and Bobby Norris Realty. Bradford Cattle Dogs, Border Collie Demos, all three days. Live Cattle, Beer Garden, 80 acres and three buildings of exhibits. Corporate sponsors, American Hat Company, the Great Bend Co-op. Go to StarExpos.net for more information, April 567. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Brendan Martin was raised on a beef cattle, poultry, and crop farm in Virginia. During college, he worked and interned in the cattle industry while raising his own Angus herd. As a result, he became interested in bovine reproduction and the power of genetic progress within a cattle herd. After graduation, Brendan started Valley Herd Health in Virginia, working mainly with beef and dairy cattle. Tarwater Farm and Home has been family owned and operated since its beginning in 1978 
what you need for farm and agriculture, lawn and garden, clothing and footwear, and so much more. You'll be surprised at what you'll find in this huge store. They have what you need and lots of it. So come take a look. You'll discover that customer service is first and foremost. Always has been with the Tarwaters. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new hired hand makes healthy cows easy. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Hey, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here. We're talking about doing a necropsy of the, the bovine animal. And when we look at the lungs, the first thing we're going to look for is the bovine respiratory disease. Other things that we'll look for if we have over enlarged lungs that are really wet and heavy coming out of a summertime uh, heifer that's been on feed for a long number of days, we'll see what we call atypical interstitial pneumonia. And these lungs are very heavy to pick up out of the, the uh, uh, rib cage. But when we, when we look at lung pathology, we're looking to see if the lungs were normal. We're looking to see if we have uh, respiratory disease, whether it's BRD or AIP or something of that nature. The heart should be heart shaped. <laughs> if the heart is apple shaped or enlarged, we may have some sort of of, of right heart failure or some sort of congestive heart failure that can be indicative. We've had high altitude disease in cattle, okay? So really when you look at the heart, you're just looking to see if it's normal shaped, if it's enlarged, or if it's round. And, and so when we move into the, to the other areas of the body, the liver, the liver should be dark liver colored and we're looking for sharp edges. We'll also look to see if there are liver abscesses that are present at that point in time, but it really doesn't talk about the pathology of why that animal was sick. I'll also look at the kidney. The kidney at that point in time should be one color. It should be you know, not pulpy when we open up and look at the pelvis of the kidney, um, indicating whether or not we had some sort of endotoxemia or endotoxin death. But for the most part, we don't see a lot of kidney disorders in, in feeder cattle, okay? And, and then the last place that we'll look is we'll find the cecum. I'll open up the cecum. I will look for, for blood in the cecum, which could be indicative of coccidiosis. Um, and then the small intestine, whether we, if it's baby calves with scours, we'll look for salmonella. We may look for E. coli scours, take sections of the gut, and move those down the line. But for the most part, our pathology is going to occur in that, that respiratory tract. It's going to occur in the, with the heart and lungs. We'll also look for, for uh, opportunities with the liver disease, with kidney disease, with the intestines. But for the most part, the big thing is, is to make sure that you get your veterinarian out on the farm, understand what the clinical signs are that will guide him or her to the point in time where they can take the proper samples to, to get the proper diagnosis. It's very difficult to diagnose lameness post-death. Uh, and also, it's very difficult to diagnose central nervous system disorders. So if we have that clinical history there, and you said this animal was found morbid or down, which means it probably has some sort of central nervous system or has the potential to have some central nervous system disorder, we want to make sure that you will tell us that and we will remove the brain or remove the head. If there's any time that you think that there's something zoonotic, which meaning that, that animals could transfer it to you uh, from themselves, animal to human transmission, Make sure that you wear band-aids when you do necropsies. Make sure that you wear eye protection when you do necropsies. And if you're going to go out and do a necropsy, make sure you wash your hands. Make sure that you wash your clothes. Do not expose children or people that are uh, immunodeficient at that point in time to these potential diseases. Uh, necropsies are a great tool, and it's something that I think that, that you need to make sure that you get a veterinarian on your farm. Always work with your local veterinarian. You're watching Doc Talk today. I appreciate you uh, watching us. If you want to know more about what we do here, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks for joining us today, and I'll see you down the road.
Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.